the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue Game, your host, Mark Francis. The Daily Beast's royalists ask, is Princess Kate's rebrand really about seeing off Meghan Markle? We've seen a lot of Kate recently, while Meghan has been relatively quiet since the publication of Spare. One thing to keep an eye on is Team Kate's hiring of branding and marketing expert Alison Caulfield. A source told The Telegraph, What the Princess of Wales is doing is a very clear sign that she is redefining herself now that she has this new role. The role of heir or wife of the heir brings opportunities and also responsibilities as you represent the monarchy, not only around the country, but also around the world. She has a greater platform now, so she needs the right team to deliver for her. Royal commentator Hilary Fordwich told Fox News Digital, This choice of Alice is not as outlandish as many are claiming. What is certain is that it won't be business as usual for the princess. It can't be. Prince Harry changed all that when he took the gloves off. When the going gets tough, the tough get going, and the Princess of Wales is made of tougher stalwart stuff than her quiet demeanour might belie. The best course is to continue to focus on others. Alice has the track record for such. She is touted as being the mastermind behind Chef Jamie Oliver's focus on food education and free meals in schools. Together, as long as the Princess of Wales and Alice stick to the high road, they'll soar raising the young next generation with them as they plough ahead. Kinsey Schofield, host of the To Die For Daily podcast, told Fox News Digital, I do think the Princess of Wales needs a trusted confidant now more than ever. She needs to build a support team around her that helps her feel confident and safe, as she has been unfairly attacked in recent years by her brother-in-law and his wife. Between Mexit and the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the Prince and Princess of Wales have had to take on much more responsibility, so a strong support system is crucial. The biggest piece of advice I would give someone like Miss Caulfield is to champion William and Catherine while understanding the larger objectives of the institution. There has always been infighting between different palace officers, but the King's team and Prince William's Catherine's team have got to show unity over the next few years to ensure the longevity of the monarchy. Meanwhile, Meghan and Harry's whining did not go over well with the Americans, according to Christopher Anderson, the authors of Brothers and Wives. Anderson told The Times, The Netflix documentary marked a turning point. There was the torrent of complaints, many of which seemed, for want of a better word, petty. The whining did not go over well with Americans. Brenner Thomas from agency The Lead PR also told The Times, The real issue is that Americans don't like their royals acting like reality TV stars. Newsweek gathered some other reactions, including one from culture critic Kate Young, who said, I'm definitely starting to kind of see or at least understand why people are feeling a little burnt out by them. Their grievances are valid. I'm starting to get a little frustrated with their apparent lack of any self-reflection and their place within this institution, because I think that with Harry specifically, there seems to be an inability to recognize that it's not just about family members being mean. There is a historical harm being perpetuated by the existence of the royal family that he can't seem to quite get to. He just wants them to be nice to him. But I don't think that he seems to understand the reasons they can't be nice to him, because they have to keep upholding this harmful institution. Kristen Mines, the host of By the Book podcast and a former co-host of Newsweek's The Royal Report, said, For everyone who's upset about Harry and Meghan, I think they're forgetting that a lot of public was also exhausted by Charles and Diana at the time when they were airing their dirty laundry. A lot of us forget the memory that it wasn't just the stories of each of their officers was leaking to the press, but Charles himself had a tell-all book with Jonathan Dimbleby that he co-wrote. He had a nighttime, primetime special with Dimbleby, where he told all also. He was doing it. Diana was doing it. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Rufus Sewell is to play Prince Andrew in a drama based on the disgraced royal's interview on Newsnight with Emily Maitlis. However, Rufus will be given prosthetics so that he looks less handsome. The Netflix movie is titled Scoop and will look at navigating palace vetoes to breaking through to Prince Andrew's inner circle, the high-stakes negotiations and intensity of rehearsal to the jaw-dropping interview itself. 
Director Philip Martin, who also works on The Crown, said, Up-tempo, immersive and cinematic, I want to put the audience inside the breathtaking sequence of events that led to the interview with Prince Andrew. To tell a story about a search for answers in a world of speculation and varying recollections, it's a film about power, privilege and differing perspectives and how, whether in glittering palaces or high-tech newsrooms, we judge what's true. Ex-File star and The Crown's Margaret Thatcher, Gillian Anderson, will play Emily Maitlis. In scoop. The royal story of 2023 seems to be the coronation and the shadow cast by Spare. An insider told People, This is all so ghastly. Although there is sorrow because the Queen has died, the coronation should be a joyful moment too, because Charles will be crowned, but this is a massive shadow. It appears to be William who is the one who is most upset. Royal sources suggest there is internal fatigue over the brothers squabbling and eventually something will have to give. A source said, William is the one who is most upset and needs time to calm down. He has been painted as hot-headed and unsympathetic, but I don't think he will back down. It's whether they can move beyond it and accept that they view things differently. It is such a momentous occasion for Charles and he would want his son to be at the coronation to witness it. He would like to have Harry back in the family. If they don't sort it out, it will always be part of the king's reign and how he has felt his family disjointed. He has had a reputation as a distant parent, and it would be awful for him for that to continue. Harry is said to be dug in wanting some sort of apology if he is to attend the coronation. A source told People, The problem is that the Sussexes want a capitulation and apology by the palace, but when recollections vary, that's quite difficult. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favourite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. I'm Melissa McKay, star of the new podcast, The Royals of Malibu. I play Ella, a sex worker just trying to survive when I get swept away to the wealth and the drama of Malibu. You know, you can like something without touching it. You've made the biggest mistake of your life, Ella Sinclair. You are a total psycho! Will Ella find a happily ever after ending? Or will these rich kids destroy her? Fall in love with the Royals of Malibu on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts.